Hello, people of Earth and elsewhere. Welcome to the Mew View, a reviewing segment of the channel that is made up of spam and crackers. This time around, the view is a view you, Hakusho that is, a 90s anime adaption of a popular manga at the time, which took me a bit by surprise when I finally got around to watching it. Now, here's how it all went down. To be honest, I can't really say why it was I decided to watch this one. I guess it was just looking for an anime to occupy me between Fridays, and the show in question happened to have been on my queue to watch list for a while. It was old, it was long, and quite frankly I was expecting a repeat of my experience of when I tried to watch Inuyasha a few years ago. But I had to start at some point, so on April 11th of 2016, I began my descent. Nine days and 112 episodes later, I was having a serious anime hangover and trying to balance it out by drawing fan art. We all see where that went. Man, I loved this show. By some miracle, I got myself into a shonen action series that didn't have the life fillered out of it, and I actually enjoyed a majority of it. Let me start at the beginning. Once upon a time, the protagonist died. Guys, that's no spoiler, that's how the show starts. Seriously, meet Yusuke Urameshi, the ghost. He was hit by a car, but back on point, I don't ever recall reading a description of the series, so this caught my attention, which is 93% of the time a good thing. So I continued to watch. The show introduced me to characters I knew more by reputation than the actual series, but that was okay because I progressively became attached to the main cast, which again, as a whole, does not happen very easily. Couple this with a dub that was substantially impressive for its time, and I never wanted to look away from the screen. The dialogue was witty and hilarious to the point where I might just have to make a list of the most quotable animes I know just so that I can put this at the top. For all it's worth, I can't call it entirely original, but I mean how original can you get when shonen action and fighting are in your genre list, but I digress. The series consists of four seasons of varying length. The first 25 episodes is the first season, and it does the whole, here's the cast, here are the first few arcs so that you know we can get the ball rolling well enough done. And then it jumps into the second season, which is the longest, and Yu Yu Hakusho takes on the tournament style trope, which happens in a lot of shonen action series as well. Again, not unique, but the setup was refreshing when everyone was grouped into teams and they did team battles and all the matches were kind of set up a little bit differently, so it was almost kind of like Pokemon battles was the way I was looking at it. No two rounds were exactly the same, and it was really quite entertaining to watch. Uh, not just entertaining, I'd say it's more like fan flipping tastic. If it has anything to show for it, it's that these fights know how to flip their fans. <laughs> That's not funny. At this point, I was getting nowhere with who I could call my favorite character. Yusuke sets a pretty interesting standard for shonen action heroes. Kurama is just cool to have around all the time, and getting inside of his head is always fun, but I found myself enjoying Hiei's fights the most. And then there was always Kuwabara, who is pretty much as lovable as the idiot friend character can get, who is also a decent fighter in his own right. By the end of the second season, I was in love with this show so much, and the pacing was pretty much perfect. But then we went into my sore spot, which is the third season, alternatively known as the Chapter Black arc. Now, I was pretty go good about the whole concept of the new spirit powers and stand users, I mean territories, when they were introduced. Okay, I'm not going to act like I wasn't comparing these t this style of fighting to the things that happened in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but that was the least of my problems with the season. I mean, the whole series took a really dark and dreary turn, and it kind of went that way at the end of the last season, but it just got really, really heavy by the time we got into this arc. The whole Chapter Black thing just compounded on top of that. Now, a series getting a little bit darker going into a third season, especially a series of this length, isn't necessarily a bad thing, quite the contrary, when you want to try and hold an audience's attention, a little bit of a switch up is generally a good thing, but I am just personally at odds with the motivations of the villain Sensui and so many other things that happened in this arc that I just really did not enjoy it. and. By the time we got around to the wrap-up, we were getting into this really typical, somewhat stereotyped, boring, drawn-out, shonen action fighting finale. Though this series is otherwise really good at wrapping up loose ends, there were a bunch of questions that I wanted to ask that I knew would never get answered, and I was just kind of sitting there like, why, what? Oh well. 
The point is, it ended on a few interesting notes, but I was happy that this season was finally over. Now for everything that seemed long and boring and drawn out about the chapter Black Arc, the final season of Yu Yu Hakusho seemed too short for its own good. Seemed, no, it was too short for its own good. Most people will tell you that, probably. Things got a bit lighter, and I went back to enjoying the entirety of everything, except for this one gripe I have that also I've seen a lot of other people have about leaving someone behind during the final stage of the show, whereas everybody else got their characters fleshed out enough for any fan to be happy with them. Well, what happened happened, and though I hated to see the series end, I was satisfied with how everything was wrapped up. Now let's find the movies and the OVAs! Woohoo! Okay, so to summarize, Yu Yu Hakusho is pretty awesome. The story was by no means uninteresting and was fairly well paced, even though there were a handful of inconsistencies in the story, but we'll go into that another time, maybe. Though, I, while I feel the chapter Black Arc was less enjoyable than the rest of the series, it didn't detract from my overall love of the show, and I will say that it was a pretty good shot at switching up the feel of the series. As far as the cast of characters go, while they're a bit along the stereotype side, they were lovable and substantially developed as the series progressed, so I don't really have any complaints there either. The animation and the dub of the series are also impressive given the time period, and now I have to say they're fighting for the top spot in my list of favorite 90s anime. As far as recommendations go, I can say that Yu Yu Hakusho should be on the watch list of everyone's 90s anime. But if you're going to gripe about how old it is and how spotty the animation can get or how the dub sounds awful, etc, 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 just leave it be. Because this show needs to be watched by people who can really appreciate the classics. As a final note, I thought I'd touch on the subject, should Yu Yu Hakusho get a reboot? Now let's rephrase that actually. Do I want a reboot of this show? Heck yeah! It's Little Brother series, Hunter X, Hunter, got one, and I'd love an excuse to watch this series again and see what it would look like with today's tech behind it. But is a newer version absolutely necessary? In my opinion, no. Absolutely not. I feel like Yu Yu Hakusho has it good where it is. The anime makes good on the manga, even though it deviates in a couple areas, and I might go as far as to say that it's even better than the original source material. There's really no telling what a reboot would be like, especially if they go Sailor Moon Crystal style and reimagine things for a new generation of anime fans. There are a lot of unpredictable factors of making a reboot or anything like that, and I get the feeling that it just wouldn't be quite what I would hope for and dream of. So if something does happen, I guess that I'll just have to make an honest to goodness attempt to complain as little as possible, because like I said, I would like to see what they would do with it. And that's a wrap, guys. Thank you for watching this video through and joining me on my anime adventures. If you have any suggestions for future anime for me to watch, reviews to make, or even fan art you'd like to see, just drop a comment below. If you liked this, consider subscribing or following me on Twitter for information about my future videos and artistic attempts, among other things. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, ciao!